spent nearly the last year working on one historical knitting project and I thought I would take a little bit of a break before I start on my next historical knitting project to share with you what I've been working on over the past few weeks. It was my birthday not too long ago and one of the presents I got was this beautiful 1927 free Westinghouse sewing machine in its original cabinet. When I got it, it was in a little bit of a rough shape so I wanted to share with you all what I did in order to get it back to working order. <laughs> I was really excited to get started with restoring the sewing machine and its cabinet. I was super excited to get started as I love anything mechanical and trying to get something like that that's 93 years old to work again. What I thought was amazing was the fact that a support arm automatically extended when you lifted the top flap in order to be able to use the top flap as a side working table when you are actually sewing on the sewing machine. The sewing machine is quite heavy, so I am trying to be as careful as I can as I am moving around the sewing machine from its stored position to its in-use position, and I haven't yet been able to find another example of a free Westinghouse sewing machine that has this particular carving on its front cabinet. The side door has been previously repaired with screws. It's not the most beautiful job, but it does actually keep all the items together. And what I'm most excited about is that this actually does have its original instruction booklet, which is absolutely indispensable. I just took pictures of it so that I would make sure I didn't ruin it. And then this is actually knee operated. So you use your knee as the sewing pedal rather than your foot, which I'm still getting used to. The sewing machine still has some of its original decorations painted on it. I love the late 1920s style decorations. Some are a little bit more faded than others, but they still give this really wonderful feel. While the Free Westinghouse Sewing Machine Company started back in 1870, by the serial number and a serial number lookup table, I was actually able to date this particular model specifically to 1927, which is super exciting. To start with the restoration of this sewing machine, I'm going to start with the front plate. The front plate, or I think it might be called the face plate of the machine, is only held on by two screws, and I took off those screws and delicately removed the front plate. This front plate is actually meant to be removed as you do maintenance to the machine and you oil it regularly. While I should be oiling my modern sewing machine more than I am now, I do find it absolutely fascinating that a key part of the antique sewing machine manual was detailed diagrams and dedicated instructions on how to disassemble and properly oil and care for your machine. So you definitely had to be a bit savvy with moving machinery parts in order to make sure that you are properly caring for your sewing machine. I don't know when the last time someone actually used or cleaned this machine, but there is definitely a lot of dirt buildup in the front of this machine where the needle moves, and it took me quite a long time to remove all of that dirt and old oil. I used several cotton swabs and the appropriate cleaning agents to really get into all of the different nitty gritty details. I also then made sure to thoroughly oil all the points that were pointed out by the diagram while moving the sewing mechanism in order to make sure that all the different machinery parts were appropriately oiled before trying to sew with a sewing machine again. The plate that I had previously taken off in order to access the inside of the sewing machine also had some moving parts on it secured by screws that were quite dirty and as I tried to move them were very tough to actually get moving so I decided to remove all those parts, clean them and polish them as best as I could as well in order to make it hopefully a nice smooth running sewing machine at the end.
after cleaning and polishing the front plate and reassembling the different pieces I took off, I decided that I would move to the needle and foot portion next. I just removed both of those and cleaned and polished them as best as I could. There are also quite a few different sewing machine foots that I could add to this machine. I didn't decide to clean them at this point. I think I'll clean them as I need to use them. Next, I decided to turn my attention to the back motor end of the machine, and I took off the wheel and cleaned and polished all of those parts. They were pretty worn and dirty by this point from the motor running it for who knows how many years. This particular sewing machine seems to have been very well loved and used, which is really exciting that I get to bring it back into working order. And something that I didn't mention before is we did make sure that the electric still worked on this machine by plugging it in and turning on the light, which did turn on and just trying the motor. So the motor does turn, but there's heavy, heavy friction on all of the moving parts, which is why it's absolutely necessary to thoroughly clean everything that moves and then properly oil it before attempting to run it again. After reassembling the back end of the sewing machine, once I was done with the cleaning and oiling, it was time to turn my attention to the bottom of the sewing machine. This is something that I didn't realize that you had to really focus on or restore, but it was mentioned in the original manual with a few oiling points, so I did take the time to clean that as well. And something that I found interesting is that there was actually quite a bit of thread wound around the bobbin end, which I don't know how long it's been there, but it was some beautiful green thread, so who knows, maybe I pulled off a 90 year old piece of thread. I made sure that the bottom moving parts were all as clean as I could get them, and then I oiled all the pieces as much as I could. I definitely over oiled it for maybe a regular oiling, but I really wanted to make sure that the oil got into all the crevices, made everything run as smooth as possible. The last part of the sewing machine itself that needed a little bit of care was the stitch length dial. I didn't look so dirty, but when I unscrewed everything, you wouldn't believe the amount of dirt that I found behind this particular dial. I wish I would have gotten some better shots, but this is easily one of the dirtiest parts of the machine, so I was glad that I could get in there, really clean it up, and oil some oil points that were in the area as well. <laughs> Now that the machine has been cleaned and properly oiled, I decided to turn my attention to the cabinet itself. The cabinet is a beautiful wood cabinet with a lovely carving in the front, but it was incredibly dirty. And I spent a long time trying to get off as much dirt as I could, especially in those high touch points. I saw a lot of dirt come off. I used a few different cleaning solutions that would be appropriate for wood, and then a wood restorer finish on top in a few layers in order to protect the wood for longer term use. While it didn't feel like I did very much to the wood portion, I think you can see in these before and afters that it does make quite a difference when you take the time to really clean and refinish the surface of these wood cabinets. I think that the results are really, really beautiful, if a little subtle at the end. <laughs> Now, after spending so many hours over a few weeks of cleaning, oiling, and restoring this machine, I think the biggest question that we all have is how is she going to run? I did know that the electric still worked, but I just wanted to know if the sewing mechanism would actually continue to turn smoothly because when I did a quick test of the motor when I bought it, it didn't really sufficiently provide enough 
forced to overcome the friction of all the mechanical parts that were not cared for at the time. So I wanted to see if this could be a sewing machine that I could actually use. Before I test out the sewing machine, please enjoy some of these gratuitous after shots of the beautiful 1927 Free Westinghouse sewing machine after she's been restored. We're going to come up on the moment we've all been waiting for, which is actually testing her out. I pressed on the knee Rheostat, and I can't believe it, she spins beautifully. I will admit, this is not the first time I tested her out after restoring her. The first time, I think there was still a little too much oil left over, and she did smoke a bit, but now she runs beautifully. I just want to say thank you so much to everyone for watching my videos and my previous series on an 1892 walking ensemble. I think though for the next few videos I might be staying in the 1920s and if you stick around then next time I'll be showing you a garment that I sewed completely with this 1927 Free Westinghouse sewing machine. I hope that I'll see you all then.